Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's your girl Cranky Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. I'm gonna be spraying my hair right now. So it is what it is. Yes, I am unraveling these um, because they were not supposed to stay reveled in the first place. Let me just put some caveats out there. Captions, captions, captions. They are not always accurate. Please look out for that. Uh, sometimes they also use a small G for God, so they're not reverent. Look out for that. Look out also for uh, the fact that they are misspelled or something, whatever. Look, they're not accurate. I don't have time to edit them. I don't have anybody to help me along, so we just keep them there. Plus, I just, I don't have the energy. One day's one day, should the Lord allow. Secondly, I very potentially may be wearing application makeup. If I am, you will know. Okay, like I've got underarm hairs, I'm suffering. My life is really hard, so I don't care to shave. If you're disturbed by that, it is what it is. Disturbances have been all around me 24-7. Okie dokie, my uh, mini braid circumstance up tops. That's what it's out here giving. That's what it's out here doing. Let us spritz it. Let us spray it. Do I like them when they're like this or should I just leave them? These are gonna get old, I can tell. And when they get old, I'm gonna feel some kind of way. But I don't care because I'm keeping them for three months. We want the hair to grow. Okay, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I'm also human, but I've just been touching my very oily hair. So we are not trying to do to touch our faces given that we've got like acne for a problem okay i'll style these after i spray okay yeah uh what's up today's the 31st of january 2024 2024 yes um it's it's just any other random day in these trees this is my carrot spray the one with the aloe whatnot um portion of it that was put in the deep freezer type establishment thing so it's been preserved, but now it smells like the product of the bottle that was in the fridge, the store-bought. Okay, we're not gonna go in too much with this. Remember, this is an experiment. So for those reasons, we are testing it right here in front of you. Like it's going, like, I don't know, like, as if though this is ever gonna go anyway, this content. If it works, you'll know, because my hair will be growing and growing. Okay, um, uh, no, I'm not gonna be putting oil on this. Guys, uh, you know, there's a lot going on that's just really nasty. Y'all, I do apologize. I'm gonna take this spritz back to the fridge because I don't want it going off quickly because I'm not trying to make this every day or second day or whatever. So just wait a minute. Thankfully, the camera that I'm recording from pauses. Hey, what's up? Could you tell that we paused? Hmm, hmm. Bet not. Why? Because we paused. That's it. Anywho, anyhow. Uh, how shall we style this? I don't know, like, does it really matter? Am I gonna keep on doing this with these? I feel like these are so skinny, but, like, who cares? I liked what I had done there. Anyway, um, y'all, I feel, uh, strange. I feel sad, like, all the time. I feel harassed, lambasted. I wish I had bobby pins, but I don't. So, this here is just gonna be kept together. Just like that. What is that? What is that? We do not want funny little things just kind of sticking around. I don't know. I like fringes, y'all. The French. French. -ish. We used to call them French in South Africa because, like, that's just how we pronounced it. Yeah, I, I prefer them. I can already peen. I can smell a thing. Should I just... Let me just... Okay. To just do whatever they want to do. No, can't just leave here to do whatever it wants to do on your head. You have to tame it like handle it tell it to sit like a nice little doggy because if it doesn't sit you're in trouble yeah okay i think we'll stick with that and some grabby hands uh the less i'm in the hair the more or the faster we get to a particular point uh-huh uh -huh, uh -huh. uh already uh my hair over here is feeling soft so good Alrighty. okay cool what shall we say? Let's move that out the way so we're not distracted. And I hope I don't get acne just because these things are like chilling on my face like proper. I never used to have such sensitive skin where every second day I'm breaking out into something. Like, I, I thoroughly blame everything that's happening on the tribulation I'm going through. Yeah, I do not think I would be this acne prone if I was not in this situation. 
Anywho, I feel obsolete. Thank you very much. That's the word. I'm sad. I'm broken. I'm devastated. Okay, I need a fan. Every time I switch off the fan in this joint, I promise you I enter into some kind of abysmal heat. Abysmal heat. And it's just so rough to deal. Anyway, yeah. Okay, look. I feel obsolete. Like obsolescence. As in end of myself, end of my life. As in flatline, we are done. As in there's nothing left here to work with. And that's exactly what people want me to feel like to get to in order to finally settle and compromise. Well, congratulations, I do. I do. I feel obsolete. I feel done for. I feel like it's over. Uh, I feel as if though there's no getting out of this, that I'm gonna forever perpetually just stay in this obsolescence. And upon walking around these streets as obsolete as I am, I will then inevitably shrivel up like a prune into a bitter older woman that is really very sad looking at everybody else that was able to live and it all just feels very unfair to me it feels sad i keep getting bombarded by dreams from of basically just showing me okay how can i describe this look i am i'm harassed by the same thing and like day and night the same thing is after me day and night the same thing is pursuing me and it's hard to talk about it over and over again because I feel just as obsolete as I feel. I feel like the topic of conversation is also in and of itself obsolete. Uh, like I've been speaking about this for a minute and if this is what's going to consume me whole, eat me whole, make out of me breakfast, lunch, lunch and dinner, then yo, like I just, I mean, I, like I, I seriously don't know what to do. I've been waiting on God and I look at him and I'm like, are you really gonna let me be obsolete just like that? Because there are people that tried to obsolete, or obsol obsolete me up and it worked. Like, how are you gonna give him that? How are you gonna, like, I'm, I just keep looking at God on some, how are you gonna give him that? How, how, how did you just give my, my ex-boyfriend this? Like you literally awarded it to him on a silver, pl on a silver platter. Like he is a psychopath and he got what he wanted. How are you gonna give a complete stranger that does not know me, that guy from the US, what do you want it? Like, how are you going to make me obsolete so that in his lifetime, an evil man that buried his ex-girlfriend will say to himself, at least, even though she embarrassed me, she humiliated me, at least I never got to mourn or cry when she went on to be merry with somebody else when she went on to be happy with some other guy how are you gonna just give them that i feel obsolete i feel absolutely obsolete i watch a lot of hair content on youtube i love hair y'all y'all know that right um and they give me all these ideas this was inspired by a whole bunch of these chicks that do hair videos on youtube and I found myself getting so heartbroken. Some of the girls are so good at what they do, or I just take a liking to them more than others, such that I would watch more and more of the videos than, than other people. You know, like one chick, I'll watch a video and I'll like her so much that I'll just keep going into the next advice that she has to give about what's going on with twists or mini braids or whatever, okay? And a lot of the hair content creators on YouTube are young women. Okay, black 4C hair content creators. They're like, a lot of them are like in their 20s. Okay, yes, there are women who are not in their 20s, but it appears to me like the larger majority of them are in their 20s. I don't know, it could, that might not be accurate. Maybe there's others who are older, but frankly, the ones that I keep on crashing into on YouTube are women in their 20s. And I, I watch their content. The advice they give is really good concerning hair. Okay. Um, and some of the videos that are on on YouTube about hair are also old like they like four years ago six years ago seven ten years ago that this person uploaded this video you'll be shocked like surprised that oh I'm watching a video that's this old uh, it's so relevant to this information today that I would have imagined it was done yesterday but I guess that's just the nature of social media videos stay there for like ever in a day it's like a, a cloud an archive space or something for you to be able to watch something from long ago. So this information is new to me, even though it's old news for these particular content creators. Uh, but before you come to learn that the videos that you're watching are old, like four years ago, 10 years ago, six years ago, five years ago, uh, before you come to learn that, you think the video is current until you click on the exact same content creator's video 
that that has up recently uploaded something like two weeks ago three weeks ago two days ago and you notice a massive difference in the way they look all right like as in this person has aged from perhaps 21 to 29 or they've aged from 16 to 23 or yeah so you can see that there's like a difference in the way that they look in the face and you're like oh she's grown um but something has has been killing me inside softly like it's just been butchering me it's been having me for breakfast lunch and dinner it is the observation of things that happen when people grow up when people get older when they move from being teenagers in high school to being young um, adults or when they move from being young adults to being older young adults or you know headed for middle age when they enter their late 30s when they enter their 30s even from their 20s etc yeah when you observe a, a young woman in her entering her prime going through those years uh, the years where there is the most activity in a person's life in terms of essentially acquiring a, a, a legacy acquiring a new identity um that would not be hard to watch for me like even in the slightest if i was not just stuck like just sitting like i said i feel obsolete so these content creators that i've been watching the videos of these these young ladies yeah one in particular uh i loved her mini braids or was it mini twists i i i, I love i loved her mini twist or mini braids video whatever that she was doing and i, I love that i love what it is that she did over there right and when i watched that video of hers where she was counseling on mini braids she looked a particular way and the video i came to learn only after i clicked on her more recent content that it was it was done four years ago i did not look that it was done four years ago okay this chick was doing a vid about how to install keep upkeep uh what do you call this uh maintain mini braids how long you can keep them for blah blah and i love the video right and she in that video looked like she could have been like university age she looked like a university student okay yeah she looked like she could have been a university student a type establishment thing i watched it i enjoyed the video and then i click on a fitness video of hers i realized that oh i liked her. i took a liking to her as a person just generally and then one of the recommended videos at the end of her videos was something along the lines of my fitness journey um and it came with pictures and everything and i also have like a fitness journey so i clicked on that because i'm also interested in fitness right i also am interested in fitness not just him uh, it's one of it's some of the videos that i i check out you guys know that i've said it before that my, my my niches the general niches i tend to consume every single day on youtube are hair lots of hair content every so often fitness of course gospel content um and covers i love watching singing covers as well on youtube so i will get recommended stuff like that quite a lot and i'll click on it and also dance like yeah because i like dance type thing yeah okay cool very well now that you've banked that i came to learn that this same chick has a fitness journey she's been trying to get fit or she's trying to lose weight or gain it or whatnot. i think she was trying to gain weight a uh, type thing and also develop muscle etc so when i saw that recommendation i clicked on it to see okay let's see what she's doing how she's coming along on her journey and what her strategies are and what she eats blah blah and when i clicked on it my heart sank so much guys i got so heartbroken and i was like this is not supposed to be happening i'm not supposed to be getting hurt by seeing stuff like this i'm not supposed to be low-key wishing that everybody was in a an icicle frozen little position just like me that everybody should just be exactly the same thing four years later five years later ten years later that i have been in because i've literally been in this stagnant frozen position for a decade ever since 2014 it's 2024 it's going to be 10 whole years completely this year in november that i've been in this situation and it's a it's excruciating it's very heartbreaking to be here y'all don't understand like it's i'm just frozen in time i'm like a polaroid like a photo a snapshot i've been in one frozen position for a decade and nothing in my life has moved for a decade and i keep looking at god and i'm like but why did you give them that like why did you give these animals what they wanted i mean they're the perps they're the they're, they're they're what's wrong with the world they're they're everything that's problematic with the planet they're those jealous freaks that sabotage colleagues in the office they're those people that everybody cannot catch a break because of why are you giving them that did you not say in your word that you will not allow us to be put to shame 
that you are not going to allow us to be uh, what is this um condemned when brought to trial how are you gonna let an ex-boyfriend that is very much still in the world a pagan prosper to shatter the glory of you sending your daughter through life her marrying her off giving her children giving her grandchildren you know the whole thing that happens to her lifestyle how are you gonna go allow the smothering of your glory as god on earth through a servant of yours that chose you somebody that chose you and so wants to carry a flashlight a torch in this world of your grace of your to show the world what you do in your disciples how are you gonna let a dim person like somebody who is dark someone who takes glory from a room someone who switches off the light when they come in someone who is extracting as with a straw life inside a person the blood they're in like a vampire how are you gonna let someone so shadowy prosper to take your torch from society was i not the better ambassador was i not the better person to proliferate or promulgate like was i not the better option to linger for your glory for your sake for your own name's sake if not for me let it be for your own name's sake how are you just letting me sit here in obsolescence while some animal goes on to grab a wife that he's breaking the heart off because he's still focused on his ex-girlfriend and he went and had churn with her acted like he was doting and adoring of this woman while he was actively surveilling an ex-girlfriend that he was making sure is going nowhere i know witchcraft does not always work god why because nobody would live if it was working these guys are freaks they're ridiculous and they bewitch everything they can in these streets so no one would live no one would be okay if witchcraft thrived as it desires to every spell every wand that they wave in the sky if at all they waved it and witchcraft was successful all the time literally absolutely nobody would get anywhere in this world no one would have children no one would deliver pregnancies peacefully nobody would be able to raise children past the age of 0.7 nobody would get anywhere because these people do which everything they can they stand up against everything there would be no successful wedding day i promise you there would be no successful wedding day there would be nobody that wakes up on their wedding day and goes through the morning afternoon and evening successfully swimmingly and then go to honeymoon thereafter if witchcraft successfully worked against everybody so just because the world is still a going concern just because it's still spinning around in its axis just because of the fact that the sun rises and sets every single day that tells me and and, and also just because the the um, plants are still green and shoots of flowers are still blossoming that tells me that witchcraft does not work 100 percent of the time there are some spells that you just don't allow to operate so given that it doesn't always work why did you let it work on me why did you allow these people to get basically this the, the fizzling away of a person the eradication completion of at that of a human soul like to just go and grab a woman that wanted you she chose you she got out like literally i got out i left the world i was 26 when i got when i came to christ just 26 and a half when i came to christ i escaped i dodged a bullet i got out and i made a determination from that quarter life to follow jesus and you let them snuff me out am i not supposed to be a city on a hill am i not supposed to be mounted somewhere pinnacled basically shining your light being salt being light why am i not allowed to thrive a youtube channel why can i not speak my truth why am i not able to share my testimony in a way that's going to be hear, heard in a way that's going to be embraced in a way that's going to be celebrated by people who might very potentially be blessed by it it is not as if though nobody is prepared to listen to me because god you remember a time when just as i was starting out on social media trying to grow my content on facebook i grew to 1000 followers within two months within two months and then all of a sudden bah i was i was stopped all of a sudden i was stopped and i'm still sitting on that 1000 followers a year later a year later a year later so i've been frozen in one position for an entire year two years now i started on my youtube i grew about 300 subscribers over about two months I, I mean 300 subscribers per month i grew about 300 subscribers per month at some point i was growing 300 subscribers minimum average per month so by now i should be sitting on thousands of followers i should by now seeing as i've been all up in this joint for two and a half years now um i should at this stage be sitting on uh, you know just under ten thousand followers on youtube by now i should be if at all that growth trajectory had been maintained uh, but then one day all of a sudden it stopped and these things suddenly ceased to like you know happen for me I, I suddenly just stopped moving when certain things happened when certain people came at me with these darknesses you you know it 
so basically you're giving them a, a success and prosperity and making them feel as if though if i just stop something it'll stop if i block something it'll block why in the world under heaven am i like one who is in the grave in the ground and there's like one or two people that are walking up putting flowers on my grave and those one or two people who are putting flowers on my grave are trying to make me feel as if though i'm the only way they're the only way that i can live i've got two men in particular that have got lofty ambitions where i'm concerned my ex-boyfriend and some dude from the us of a and the two of them might loggerheads with each other literally trying to get the same woman and the thing that is motivating them to feel as if though this is actually feasible is the observation of how frozen and stagnant i am in other words they feel as if though their sorcery is working and uh it's only a matter of time since i was frozen into oblivion by them and they're not the only ones who froze me but they are by far the most um insistent and ambitious where i am concerned to be with them romantically they feel as if though it's theirs to keep like i'll never love again like what is this uh first come first served like they like what what, what, what do i want to say competing to viability they look at me as somebody that is viably going to one day just like successfully ultimately be either of theirs and so it's a matter of competition between the two of them yeah i have had other people come at me with a flying kick other men right but they have very quick not quickly some of, like some of them it took a couple of months but they ultimately just you know walked away from they got out they moved on they moved on like blackjacks being picked out of a jersey when you get home after walking through a bush they ultimately fell off but then there's two that just remain imaginative of being head neck on neck with each other for me because they have made out of me an obsolete woman that no other man is looking at and my thing with that is I know God deep down inside with every bone in my body I am aware that uh what do you call this that witchcraft does not work not, not especially against Christians so why are you allowing these people to steal the shine of your daughter until she feels obsolete and again why under heaven are you allowing so much darkness to overwhelm the light did you not say that um in him okay that Jesus is the is the light and in him uh, and his light is the light of the world and the darkness comprehended it not the darkness could not comprehend the light so essentially the light is the what drives out the darkness i mean that's littered all across the scriptures darkness light drives out the darkness everywhere where it is at it always overwhelms if you switch on a matchstick in the middle of the night the attention of everything around is going to go towards that matchstick even though the, the the surrounding environment is cloaked in night light always drives out darkness and the darkness never is able to comprehend it so how is this darkness of night overwhelming the light like you are one of two things is happening here you're disregarding me as your daughter altogether you're saying i'm not yours you're saying i am not your child and so therefore you don't recognize me as light and so you allow the darkness to overwhelm me or there must be something else that's going on here but one thing that is certainly true is that witchcraft does not always work and maybe that's the reason why these people are like black jacks on wool on me maybe that's why they're so obsessed where i am concerned perhaps the reason why they're lingering for dear life over my case is because i am by far the most successful case that they have ever been dealing with that they've ever dealt with for for sorcery they all along they've been they've just been hitting 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 striking striking everywhere where they're striking with whatever they can strike and they've won some and lost some they are every so often prosperous whereas in other respects they not they don't get what they need and so where it is that they have failed some of the time and prospered some of the time they have given up because they realize that i am apparently allegedly like um what do you call this like the perfect experimentation hub like the environment like the uh um the the, the ecosystemic factors that contribute to my existence have made me what is imagined a breeding ground for their sorcery like some kind of a successful climate a successful environment for their sorcery to work i, I like you've made them believe that i am spiritually very susceptible in a way that many other people aren't when i should not be so spiritually susceptible i should not be so spiritually susceptible given that i'm a christian i, I should if anything be one of the hardest cases that they're working on because we are the ones that they that they struggle the most with because we've got the holy spirit witchcraft does not work on christians because we're born again we've got the holy spirit but sometimes it doesn't work even on unbelievers because god just doesn't want it to work on them do you understand the lord is just not interested that they should get what they want in that regard and so because sometimes the lord is just very uh, simply flat out just like no no i'm not gonna let you get this yeah 
even on unbelievers it doesn't work so these people feel as if though i've got the right and proper environment to thrive their darkness how, how can i even describe this it's like mold or fungi yeah let's use mold or fungi in what in like if you grab a uh, bread and you put it in leave it in a bread bin for a week it'll likely mold of course that's exactly what's going to happen but the darker the bread bin and the more and the more humid the environment you know the more moist the, the, the environment and the darker that bread bin and the deeper it is the faster the mold is going to grow so you could get mold on bread in three days four days sometimes it could come in only after two weeks depending on the environment that that bread has been chilling in in the refrigerator it will be slowed down significantly outside on the kitchen counter it'll be expedited as as in comparison to the refrigerator however not as much as it would be expedited if it was put in a bread bin that is dark and more so if at all the environment around is humid more so is it going to fester so uh, basically what these people feel about me is that i am in a dark damp environment and so for those reasons i am the feasible atmosphere to fester mold and that is what it is that it makes me feel obsolete i feel like i'm moldy bread i feel like people are lodging on me with all of their peach fuzz of mold because of the fact that they anticipate that what i am is the perfect breeding environment for witchcraft i've been latched onto by parasites do you understand that have made an observation of my living conditions and imagine that i am a bullseye i am a gavel dropped in co in, in favor of furthering their dark agenda and they think i am like 10 for the price of one in other words i am something that is first come first served it's quite pretty for something dumped it is quite pretty for something abandoned for something thrown away on the floor it's pretty where else am i gonna find this like a diamond in the rough like like a miner like if um in south africa miners i i don't know about other countries they, they're quite underpaid and they are not only are they low income citizens but they also live in very lowly environments however they mine these gems these minerals um from the earth that are exceptionally valuable and that make their bosses their owners extremely wealthy uh, these miners are therefore as a result of what it is that they are mining in the ground gold diamonds whatever might be the precious um, mineral the precious, the precious stone etc they therefore get searched they get searched every single day when they go down into the shaft uh, when they come back up again they, they get thoroughly searched to make sure that they're not leaving with any gold they're not leaving with any diamonds they're not leaving with it because they yeah and then they get paid this like chump change money they get paid absolutely nothing in order for them to mine these things out. I feel as if though I am infested at the present moment by miners where there is no, uh, what do you call this? There's no regulating authority in that environment that is making sure, searching them, sifting them, uh, uh, frisking them. There's nobody frisking them at the at their uh, working premises where they work at the end of each day to make sure that they're not leaving with the diamonds in the rough. To make sure they're not leaving with the precious metals with the precious stones to make sure they're not going home with them yeah i'm dealing with some pretty ransacky people lackluster absolutely shoddy and dark involved in horrific acts against the god of the universe i'm dealing with such people as these that have absolutely no business walking out with any gem because they have not been trained to handle gems they've not been they, they, they in and of themselves are not gems they you know how, how it is true that the only thing that can cut a diamond is a diamond because it's just it's that hard uh, type establishment thing these people have not been in and of themselves mined out in and of themselves they've not been declared a precious stone because of having turned their lives over to god they're dark they're ominous they, they, they're beastly they're in the the, the the filth of this world's practices and however who does not want something of great value in their possession whether or not they have earned it everybody wants the best of things but it is not everybody that is prepared to work for them it is not everybody that is prepared to you know get down on the ground and get their hands dirty and their knees ashy in order that they might be elevated to the next level people don't want to work yesterday i made a lament about that about that particular thing where i was using uh, proverbs in the scriptures to describe laziness and how god says that a little sleep and a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will overwhelm you like an armed man and scarcity like a bandit you will get taken over by poverty when you sleep around when you just sleep and do nothing when you to twist and turn on your bed uh, uh, like a door turns on its hinges you are going to find yourself impoverished right that is what laziness achieves not very much for the person in question that is lazy and so if at all that is the status quo why oh why god are you allowing all of these you know uh 
essentially grubby handed people to uh, appear to be getting away with the prospect the possibility it has not happened yet of walking out of a mine with your gem like they're literally walking out of a mine with your gem they're about to walk out of a mine that they went in being the gold diggers that they are came into their jobs at a time when there was nobody policing or monitoring that particular area because it was night time for the very purpose of trying to very quickly get rich very quickly to get uh, very quickly attempt to get wealthy so that you can stop working altogether so you can relax basking in the sun of somebody very valuable in your life so that you can get something in your life that's going to set you up for life even though you don't work for it so a whole bunch of freaking jewelry thieves a whole bunch of uh, you know cash and transit heisters people that are into random crime literally think that i am something feasible for the grabbing something feasible for the taking precisely because of the fact that i am in so much want the mine appears to be unlocked at night and there are no security guards there's nobody frisking anybody at the door and these people who made an observation that the thing that they mined during the day has been left abandoned in the night they then go into the mine and think that at night when we go we can go and grab that diamond where are my guards where are my angels where under heaven is the horde around me that is supposed to make it clear to these miscreants that you can't just take what you want you can't but right now i appear to be taken from like literally they cast a spell on my youtube channel and it freezes they cast a spell on my facebook page and it freezes like why are you giving them what they want because here it is that your daughter now feels obsolete here it is now that your daughter feels obsolete and it is precisely that obsolescence that I feel like I am that is making them feel like they're just that one step closer to getting what they want from me. I am frustrated by filthy men. I am frustrated by entitled people. I am frustrated by those who imagine it's only a matter of time before I finally take what they will bring my way. There is this song uh yeah mary j blige that has been on a loop going and going ever since i met that beastly animal from america it's been going and going and going at the top of my mind and every time i wake up to hear that song my heart gets so broken because i'm like god how long am i gonna make war with this how long are you going to keep me frozen i mean it's obvious that something ominous happened about two years ago i was i was growing about 300 subscribers every single month and i was getting traction my shorts were getting viewed now i upload a short and i literally after two weeks had zero views zero views shorts under 60 seconds and i get no views on a short not even one person viewing it never mind liking i mean you don't gotta like you don't gotta comment just look at it at all like they don't even get viewed at all and this is these are shorts not only in my uh ministry but also in my fitness that's why i stopped doing fitness shorts uh, yeah i i just stopped doing everything because for me it's like if i can just put what is the minimum amount of work that i can put out there without feeling exasperated given that i'm not getting anywhere then i'm best so it's about not being silenced altogether so i don't want to burn out and as a result of not wanting to burn out i have had to reduce the amount of work that i do precisely because it's going nowhere there is no motivation there is nothing encouraging me to keep pushing nothing encouraging me to keep going precisely because of the fact that i literally can do a short edit it for a good 45 minutes following which i would upload it on facebook or youtube and it will get no views it's just weird the thing about it is i am aware that social media shadow bans people i'm aware that so social media can do that but there is no shadow banning that can prevent a person from being seen at all they just restrict your traffic but they don't shut it off altogether so i cannot blame youtube entirely for this and neither can i blame facebook entirely for this even though i do think that to a certain extent censorship has something to do with it but even with censorship there is small traffic coming through to you i get nothing that's what you need to understand who in the world uploads like 15 shorts and not even one of them gets viewed it's weird and for me all i can conclude is okay so it's witchcraft we get it sometimes these things you allow them to work that you might hand people over but why are you doing that with me why have you why have you dimmed my light why have you allowed these shoddy creepy spooky creeps literally they are running a horror show where they are enduring or subjugating people to the tyranny of being in a cycle of a horror movie 24 hours a day you're giving them what they want they're like sitting in these corners and they're a spectacle however you've made out of me a spectacle because i appear to be bewitchable when i am a christian have you no adoration for your name god like it's about your fame it is about your fame it is about your name if at all you are not going to do this for me do it for you do it for yourself for your own name's sake because i am your disciple what are people thinking what are people thinking well what is anybody at all that watches my content that wanted my bene my betterment people who wanted me to be okay 
what, what what hope are they holding on to how hard is it for them to keep on um, su supporting me how difficult is it for anybody to stick by a person that has absolutely nobody coming through for them i mean it's hard when you're the only supporter of an ostracized marginalized person because at some point you're going to get tired at some point you're going to get exhausted from supporting somebody that nobody else seems to be looking at everybody gotta go live their own lives Everybody has got to go and proliferate their own agenda in these streets. And it's very rough to stand by the side of somebody that has been completely marginalized and ostracized by sorcery. You cannot leave me to be sat in this dark, dingy, like dungeon alone with men that feel like little deities where I'm concerned. They've made themselves God and they want to convince me that no one is coming. So take me. Men of which, some of whom are literally dying from diseases. They have got venereal diseases from here to Timbuktu and they want to come and take a pure woman that hasn't had sex in 12 years. 12 years. They just want to run with her. Like miners that make an observation of the precious metals or precious gems, precious stones that they mine daily and tell themselves we're going to go back at night and steal some diamonds and we'll be set for life and we'll never have to come back and work in the mine again. Imagine a man that gets a wife like that when he is dark, he is filthy, he is dingy, he is involved in occult magic, he is the darkness of the dark. Do you understand? And then he gets a super godly wife. He gets a super godly wife only because she was exhausted 40 years old and imaginative of her being obsolete. She was just tired of fighting. And so she gave herself to a, a prolific Satanist that sat her down for a whole decade in order to make sure that nobody, nobody but him is regarded as the only person she could ever love. When you create that kind of a spooky horror movie, when you are it the clown, Jason and Friday the 13th alongside Freddy Krueger all in one, how in the world under heaven do you imagine that you're going to be okay tomorrow? And secondly, God, how in the world are you going to go let Jason from Friday the 13th, Freddy Krueger, Annabelle, the spooky doll, It the Clown, and any kind of horror movie you can find in these streets, The Grudge. How are you going to let The Grudge properly take over your daughter? I mean, it's one thing for The Grudge to take over some pagan lady that don't know you from a bar of soap, but what? I am your child. I am your daughter. How are you going to subjugate me to all of this sadness, all of this sorrow, all of this want, all of this, you know, like this, just this, 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 this despicable hiddenness of my person. How under heaven are you going to let men think that the day is going to arrive? That are going to put a ring on my finger because nobody else appeared to be prepared to put one on me. How in the world are you going to make a woman that believed herself to be, I guess, a viable enough woman for at least one one soul on the earth that is honest to want to marry her how are you gonna make a woman like that get to a point where she thinks the only option that she has is like literally freddy freaking kruger freddy kruger like i gotta go and marry some devil worshiper because that appears to be the only thing that's looking at me why did you let these people take my youtube channel why did you let them silence me why did you let them spook me like this why under heaven when I am your Christian are you allowing me to sit around in obsolescence when I know that this is not witchcraft because it can't be otherwise nobody would live. It's not sorcery. This is something you've allowed but at some point I get exasperated. I get exhausted. At some point I get worn out. I used to have an audience. I used to have people that used to listen to me, follow me, subscribe me. 300 a month. Some of them would even write me personal emails in my um what do you call it Gmail. I had a very active social media presence life and i was growing and by now i'd be sitting likely on like maybe just about 10,000 subscribers i would have already monetized i might even have a small little apartment by now that's what's good i would have gotten there but it was all frozen it was stopped and you let it like when when everything that i work hard for in you just gets i just get taken from like things just get extracted from out of my hands everything i start how am i supposed to just keep going how am I supposed to just keep thinking that this is going to get better when everything I speak about that gets bewitched is bewitchable? Like everything. Like it appears as if though when I, I you know, the, the only reason why I have confidence to even rock up and speak here is because I believe in a God that is shielding my words. I don't believe in all of these doctrines of demons flying around in the Christian community where people speak about monitoring spirits. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. Don't tell everybody your plans because next thing they might come at you with monitoring spirits. I'm sorry, who in the world lives like that on tippy or like tiptoeing around the kingdom of darkness? Who? Who? Who tiptoes around the kingdom of darkness and is truly a saint? Ain't nobody. Like nobody should be tiptoeing. Like if at all, I have 
a, a celebratory note to put forward. I am going to share it. It's what you must understand because it's clearly stipulated in the word of God that we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We conquer Satan by telling the world what God is doing for us. So it is quite the contrary, really, according to Jesus' doctrine of, um, what, do you, what do they call it? Monitoring spirits. It's straight from the pit of hell. The Lord wants us to shout on the rooftops that which he has done for us. That which has been spoken in secret, he wants us to shout it on the rooftops. We cannot be secretive, clandestine people, because that which is dark is that which gets done in a clandestine fashion. However, those who are honest and above reproach, they speak on rooftops. They are able to be gladly like peacocks flutter their feathers and let the world see it god adores his glory and he wants the whole world that is full of his glory to see his glory in his servants so there is no such thing as the lord wanting us to basically smother our testimonies no he does not want us to keep quiet when we meet great men he doesn't want us to keep quiet when we get great jobs he doesn't want us to keep quiet when we acquire great breakthrough in whatever region just because we're scared of the coven next door so I have been honest and transparent about everything that's going on in my life precisely because I believe in a God that glories himself in the glory of his children. He wants us to be his ambassadors on the earth as we carry torches flashing heaven to everybody. It is the kingdom of darkness that hides everything. They hide their spells, their incantations. They don't even admit what they're into. They don't even admit they belong to the devil. They're not, they, they, they would much rather cloak themselves in a veil of Christianity than confer, confess that they are witches. They are the ones that always hide in the darkness. So I'm not about to go and withhold information that God has given me and also the glory that the Lord has awarded me in whatever respect. I'm not about to go and hide it because I'm scared some witch might just bewitch it. But sadly for me, for the past couple of years, I have been speaking things that God has shown me, things, that ideas, plans that I've got. I've been sharing them and all of a sudden I get frozen. It happened with my fitness channel. I spoke about how it is that I'm going to grow my fitness channel, blah, blah, whatever. Follow me there if you want to go and follow me in my fitness channel. And guys, it also got frozen. It's just like dead quiet. The last two videos that I uploaded of my fitness, zero views in like what, two weeks? I'm like, what in the world? What is going on? It is obviously diabolical and satanic and God has allowed it. There is no way he has not allowed it. And that is the bone that I'm trying to pick right now. And what I'm trying to understand is why have you allowed me to look obsolete and to look like the meat that is about to get consumed by some pretty filthy animals? How in the world? Are you going to give my ex like how are you going to do that though like this man did not even suit me from the very get go i wasn't supposed to be with him how are you going to give him that like if at all he didn't want to mourn and cry on the day that his ex-girlfriend married another man he was not supposed to mess up with me in the first place but he did that and that's just what happens in life you have to wear consequences of your actions when you walk in darkness but he walked in darkness he kept on bewitching me throughout our relationship and now 10 years later he's looking like the whole prolific successful devil worshiper that thoroughly went and prevented his very beautiful ex-girlfriend from even getting looked at by one man for a whole decade for real not even one honest man. Every guy that's ever pursued me ever since I came to Christ has been into the darkness. The darkness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's like he has just sent nothing but devil worshippers my way. Why did you let that prosper? Why did you let wicked men and women take away a decade of my life? It's questions I've been asking. So when I was watching those videos on YouTube of these young women on the come up that reminded me of me back when I was on the come up too type establishment thing one of them was in she looked like she could have been a student in university age type thing and i really liked it i took a liking to her i loved her what do you call this like um mini braids and whatnot and it was after her mini braid video that i got encouraged to do my own type establishment thing okay so we like her we subscribe to her very well support a young lady grow her channel yeah it is what it is but then when i saw when i clicked on a video of a, when i first saw her it was four years ago that first video that i saw well i didn't watch it four years ago i watched it recently but it was done four years ago i then clicked on her video later on on, 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 on her fitness journey that was done like just two months ago and i noticed on the face that she was all grown up she was she had grown out of that young little baby face she had grown out of it and she now looked like a mature woman she looked in all honesty she looked like me but then again i look very young um for my age i'm 39 but i i, I look like 27 8 you know what i mean yeah she looked about 27 8 right and uh having been what looked like maybe 2019 at the earliest 21 2 at the latest in the last video that i saw her in she was now a 26 7 8 year old woman now four years later five years later in the new youtube videos and looking like me i was like whoa you've grown she got out of her her her, her, her afro face the hair content that she was doing for afro she's out of it now she's doing dreads so her hair is now dreaded she is no longer sporting afro yeah and I was like, oh, so you changed your look. Okay, cool. But then the thing that broke my heart, and I, I you see, I shouldn't be brokenhearted. 
I should be glad. I should be happy. I should be like, oh, look at that. I never used to be like that. And for me, it's like, God, this, these people are giving me a new personality. Please, like, quickly um, come through for me. Have mercy on me. They are messing with my heart in a way that my heart was not like that before. My heart was not like that. I was never that jealous freak. I promise you, I never was. I was never the girl that does not like the success of other girls. I was never the person that is low-key wishing you must be just exactly what I am because that's what's going on. And when I saw that creeping up on me, when I saw it pouncing on me, I was like, God, do you not see that things are getting dire for me right now? Do you not see that I am struggling to be happy for women? Are you not seeing that? Like, why in the world are you not for your own namesake rescuing me for the piety that you insist I stay in? Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my heart. Have mercy on my soul. Have mercy on my holiness. Have mercy on my ability or lack thereof to stay holy. Because I do not want to be the, the very thing I keep on like preaching against. Women who become bitter because they've been hurt. And their bitterness makes them hate the youth. It makes them hate young women. It, it makes them look at young women with like low-key uh, what well, i need what's the word that i'm looking for like when you look at, at people with um bad like ill intention like a bad vibe like you don't want them to get something like when you cross your fingers that someone doesn't get the promotion when you cross your fingers that someone does not get a a, a, a good man when you cross your fingers that somebody with her boyfriend don't end up being fiancés and then married when you cross your fingers that somebody does not get the thing that they hope for when they study like a dog and you cross your fingers that they fail the exam anyway i've literally never been that girl i mean everybody has their vices all right everybody has something that they struggle with but with me one thing i have always managed to keep in a bunch is self-control over jealousy even before i came to christ i have always wanted what is best for my friends my family members my colleagues when people came to me with good news i was literally actually genuinely happy I, this thing that, I, that people are doing to me i don't understand it it is so anomalous it's out of this world it's otherworldly i don't get it i don't understand how somebody can secretly want somebody destroyed like yeah until it crept up on me like i'm getting emotional as i speak right now it crept up on me for the first time in a decade and i'm like never mind in a decade first time in my life that kind of sentiment i felt it welling up in my throat i felt it welling up in my heart and i was like god look at this thing is putting briars around my heart it's putting thorns around my heart it's making me evil it's making me like it's even written in some 125 is, is it 125 or 25 i stand corrected but something along the lines of the lot of the wicked do not allow the lot of the wicked or do not allow the <sighs> i actually want to look for it uh, like basically deliver your children because if you don't deliver them the if you allow them to linger in the lot of the wicked they will not if you allow them to linger in some kind of a bad position they will be inclined towards evil uh, what, what is that um is it 125 no i'm pretty sure it's not psalm 125 or is it 23 is it some 23 i wish i could find it man like i, I really like I, let me just read it like look uh, basically something along the lines of do not give to the right do not leave the righteous at the hands or at the mercy of the wicked because then their hearts will be inclined towards evil do not leave the righteous for an indefinite amount of time at the in the hands of evil men and evil women otherwise in and of themselves they will turn it's also written in matthew 24 that if the lord did not cut the, the cut the days of the tribulation short no flesh would be saved the reason why that's the case is because wickedness evil when it lingers for too long an amount of time people eventually start to imagine there is no god or they uh, anticipate that he's not coming through for them they want to take matters into their own hands it becomes very difficult to continue to trust that's what i'm getting at it becomes rough to continue to trust an invisible god when he has left you lingering in a lot of sorrow for an extended period of time so even the psalmist petitions god that don't allow the lot of the wicked to rest on me for too long lest my heart should be inclined towards evil lest my heart should be inclined towards evil it is imperative the lord it is written in his word that the lord will not suffer us to be tempted beyond what we are able he's not going to let us suffer beyond what it is that we can take in our stride and so when then you feel as if you're about to exceed that if if the lord did indeed allow for the um exceeding of that threshold we as some of the most pious christians that have been the most consecrated to jesus in the world would ultimately become some pretty evil people we would because man is not 
we are not supposed to stay in attrition for an indefinite amount of time why because we are born dead in trespasses and sins and instance that our parents conceive us so basically there is nothing good in us no one that does good no no one for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god and after we get born again when there is the circumcision in of our hearts uh we now have been given the holy spirit who by according to romans 7 we make war with this body of death and that war is never was never intended for it to be an indefinite war it was never intended to be a war that you are fighting for and it, like uh, even the lord said that he will not strive with mankind for more than 120 years because we literally struggle to be good and pious towards him we struggle to stay good towards god we struggle not to sin even when we are born again so the lord must deliver us by a certain time in order for us to be maintained and seeing as it's written in john 10 that the lord will not allow any one of us to be plucked out of his hands it therefore must mean that at some point a suffering saint's suffering has got to end whether it be by martyrdom so death or by god delivering that saint out from the hands of his or her enemies because if the lord kept that saint in that state indefinitely ex excelling beyond that which they are able to take in temptation they would tarry from god they would walk away they would hate god they would end up being like you don't care about me tests are not in are not intended to last forever that's why there was a a start date a, basically an allocated time even to examinations in in a school as a student you cannot just write an exam for two days straight without a break as how you will fail it you will literally fail if at all that exam just lingers and lingers without you taking a break without you relaxing your mind without you relaxing your body without you taking a sleep and i have been awake like on a loop 24 hours a day non-stop for two years uh, abused by some beastly animal from america and now recently he's been joined by my ex-boyfriend more and more of these men feel like they can enter the arena and basically vouch for me because i am something at dumpy long is i am being bombarded by bandits trying to do a cash and transit heist and all i can ask is god where are you where are you why under heaven are you letting me suffer like this because look at me innocently watching a hair video on youtube and then i make a discovery of what's going on in my heart that something new has come to lodge in there because mold is growing now in what is of course a damp dark environment where fungi of course can grow there is fungi growing on my heart there is something ugly happening inside me i can tell that it's there and it is growing fever it's getting hot the temperatures of it are rising and i do not know how to stop it because i appear to be unable to help it i appear to be unable to help it and on top of that there is an escalating climate of persecution against my person by my family members i am not getting out of this and it's making me embittered and i am only discovering the bitterness that dwells inside me when i watch certain content on youtube and i can't watch it the way that i used to be able to watch it before without walking in so much envy and basically ill intention against innocent people do not let me be those monstrous beastly females who because men crushed them who because they got divorced who because they messed up their lives or who because whatever might have been the thing that can cause a woman to be beastly they then started to take matters into their own hands and become monstrous and now they hate young women i can't be that girl my whole ministry is premised around protecting young women how in the world are you gonna let me get darkened when i was watching this woman's content you guys i came to see that she had matured and gotten a little bit older and i was like oh you've grown up and then as she was flailing her thing her hands around all over the show in her video i saw that she had a wedding ring i was like what the heck like i'm the only one sitting here going nowhere only one sitting here going nowhere this chick four years ago was a little child doing youtube videos for the first time with only six thousand subscribers now she's sitting on like a hundred and like thirty two thousand subscribers or something she's grown quite handsomely ever since then congratulations for her but over and above growing to over a hundred thousand subscribers so she's got that silver plaque now chilling in her bedroom likely she over and above it has since then also had a wedding since then she's gotten married since then she's met a man since then the man has made an honest woman out of her since then she has gotten married and she was talking in the video about how it is since it was a fitness video she was trying to gain weight this chick not so much lose it right because she was uh too she didn't uh, like how skinny she was and she was talking about how women keep telling her ah just wait until you fall pregnant because when you fall pregnant you will finally then break out of that skinny body of yours that you don't like and she was like girl i'm currently now trying to gain weight i don't want to wait until then type thing so i need to find an alternative to um gain weight before i plant my first child and everything that she was saying broke my heart so much that i got out of the video before i finished even watching her fitness journey i i didn't want to finish it why because i was hurt by the fact that okay four years ago this chick was just a cute little young 6,000 subscriber youtuber doing content about hair and now four years later 
she's a married woman thoroughly even talking about having a baby in the future in the near future and Garabo is just sitting here as a 39 year old woman looking at this young woman that has progressed from there to there from there to now what it is that it, that it is that she is today and my heart was not glad for how much she grew like you know when you watch little girls growing up in front of you and you're like oh you've grown so much you've grown so big when are you gonna meet a man when are you gonna give me grandchildren like the society that is normal longs for kids to go through the, the, those phases as it is expected of them to go through them successfully they look at a young girl in high school and they're like oh you've gone into such a beautiful young woman oh, are you gonna go to college are you gonna go to university and then they go to university oh you've graduated are you gonna get married are you gonna get like we want that for them but then when you want everybody to stay like in basically high school mode because you're in high school mode that is unacceptable and there are people who are literally that freaking irresponsible with human lives they are that unreasonable with people's lives because they are in older years now completely defeated everything has been ripped from underneath their feet because of their own irresponsibility and now they can't stand the youth growing up and doing what the youth do when they grow up i was never going to be that girl and i felt that creeping up on me and my thing with it is god i know that there are women who get to a point where they are really super bitter about the fact that they did not get to walk down the aisle about the fact that they did walk down the aisle but they married ike turner he would not stop beating them up or they walked down the aisle but they married some cheating freak that ended up leaving them for their secretary and so now they're embittered but i waited on you because i basically foresaw i looked into the future and i realized that look if at all i'm going to escape being my mother's daughter if i'm going to escape being my grandmother's grandchild if i'm going to escape being my aunt's niece if i'm going to escape the grain of my family if i'm going to escape the grain of the typical black girl experience if i'm going to ex escape baby mama drama uh if i'm going to escape the typicalities that dwell within my community i have got to conquer generational curses and i also have got to conquer them in the name above all names and i've got to conquer them in a way that is impossible to overwhelm i've got to be impervious i've got to be an impregnable fortress and there is no other way to become an impregnable fortress seeing as i came to believe other than the name of jesus other than in christ i knew this i found out the truth i knew that there is no name under heaven by which men must be saved other than the name of christ and i believed faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god i gave my life to you because i know that you're god there's no way you're not I am pretty convinced with that in a thorough capacity. There is no shifting shadow of doubt in me concerning that. And given that you are the God of the universe, you obviously have power to just humiliate everyone that tries to bring me low. You have got power to show everybody that no, not on my watch. This is my daughter. You can go and steal everything around you in these streets, but not her. You said in your word, and you're, a man, you're not a man that you should lie. Neither son nor man to change your mind. You said that a thousand may fall on your side and 10,000 on your right hand, but it will not come near you that these things will plague everybody else Labatagati, they will steal from everybody else they will thoroughly proper to pull the rug from underneath the feet of everybody else these deadbeat ex-boyfriends that hold their own girl exes hostage for the rest of their days that'll come to some other woman but not the one who chooses you not you you said a thousand will fall on my side ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near me so if you're not doing this for me do it for your own namesake for your own word display that your word is true about your disciples because if at all people are not awarded breakthrough that have trusted in you after a very long amount of time of waiting they will be inclined towards evil it's written in god's word do not grow weary of doing good but in um but trust that in due season you will reap the pe the peaceful fruit of righteousness if you don't give up but god how do you expect me not to give up when I am being pursued by a salivating Amnon as Tamar, a man that wants to ravage my body following which they will leave me a spinster for the rest of my days. How are you going to let such freaks look at me? How under heaven is there not going to be a sword slapping my household because of a brother of mine that will be so upset at what happened to me that he will then try and coup his own or our own dad's throne as a result of the dad's indiscretion in completely ignoring the case or the cause or the plight of a virgin girl that was taken by a thief her purity you know the story of amnon and tamer i feel like tamer i am being salivated after by some pretty filthy men that want to burp after taking me they just want to have sex with me and either move on or basically imagine themselves as ones who conquered the woman that didn't want anyone the the one who conquered the woman on a some salivating like what do you call this thing like um occult men like these filthy men that are involved in darkness they salivate after me and they are literally competing over who is going to finally get me and once a man like that sleeps with a woman like me i will literally become tamar i will become a plaque that is being shone and also 
um, seated. It, 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 it'll, it'll get lodged, almost like a display of trophies in a, a cabinet, but like in the occult. Like if I end up with an occult man, you must understand I'm going to end up being a trophy, a plaque for a guy that is going to feel like nonke nizamile and you failed. But I was the only one on Tolili. I'd say about our wajesa. I'd say about he's into Korobela. I'd say about our lawyer. I'd say about he got his career and everything with all of this darkness, but somehow managed to slip one past me. But somehow, like the guy from the US almost got there. He was my fiance for crying out loud. The one, the one from California. That's what's good. A darkened man. And if he had married me, I promise you, he would have literally ran around these streets saying, I got to marry a woman even though I have two ex-wives and kids all over these streets that was pious, consecrated, waiting on the Lord for her husband and for, at the time it was 11 years, she had not had sex until I went in there. I slam dunked in her when she rejected all men like me. But I was so good. I was such an excellent smooth talker. I was so great at basically deceiving the living daylights out of a woman that she eventually took in her stride. Something that she had once upon a time said over my dead body because I managed to convince her that nobody else is coming. Nothing is coming. And besides, you're 37. At the time I made him, I was 37. I'm 39 now. You're 37. Where, where in the world are you going? Look at your biological clock. Talk, 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 tick, tick, tick. That's what's going on. There was a time when I was prepared to settle for that guy. And the Lord is the one that ripped him out of my life. Precisely because he saw that once that guy slammed dunks into me, I'm going to be Tamar. A man that will have had the body of his own... um king of his sister a man that would have had the body of his sister following which he would have then left or despised her more than he loved her at first you know how it is written off of M amnon in the story of amnon and tamer that amnon after sleeping with tamer after raping her basically he despised her more than he loved her he ended up hating her because he got to eat and burp he got to eat and burp that's what men who feel entitled to women who have not cleansed themselves, who have not made themselves pure, who have not consecrated themselves, who have not looked at God truly, who have not studied the Lord truly, who have not dared actually imagine what the Lord wants and his precepts. Men who are not glaring, looking lovingly and longingly, glaringly into the eyes of God. Yeah, that's how they feel about godly women. Allow me to just put that out there. They want to burp us. They want to heavily breathe on us, following which they will roll around, sleep and burp and then treat you like trash. I'm speaking Ike Turner to Tina. Men that will beat you up like like how there is like they get used against you. I cannot say that enough. Women, when you feel like run like you're a marathon or like you're an athlete down the aisle instead of walking you will end up married to Amnon a man that's going to be satisfied merely because of the with the mere prospect of banking the the the, 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 the chaste godly woman that was a heart to get but they but he prospered to get her they are hunters like hunting in the wilderness and they urinate on women the way that animals urinate on their territory to market they're not godly they don't know how to love women as christ loved the church and ever since the guy from the u.s the lord it clearly appears he has been very protective of me to make sure that i don't end up with any such men as these as that however i'm only being looked at sadly by such men as these and they feel as if though i am sitting in a dark humid environment mm. I'm sitting in a dark, humid environment that is the festering, perfect, growing atmosphere for mold and fungi. And they are mold. They are fungi. They are those spores and they are trying to grow on me. And I have been looking at the Lord on some Father, get me out of this dark, damp, human place. The, these swamp things can only thrive around a swamp. I am chilling in a swamp and I've been in one for a minute. And you said in your word that you don't want the righteous to linger in sorrow for too long, lest they should be inclined towards evil. The lot or the rod, that's the word that I'm looking for exactly. I think it's 125 or 25. I'm still looking for that psalm. Um, is it some? Okay, let me see if I can find it. Uh, the reason why I don't think it's, it's, it's 125 is because of the fact that that's the one that speaks about the God's children being like mount zion it actually is it's psalm 125 let's let's read it okay it reads those who trust in the lord are like mount zion which cannot be moved but abides forever as the mountains surround jerusalem so the lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evil do with evil doers. Peace be upon Israel. That that psalm. That's the one that I'm leaning on on some God. Do good to these past me. couple of years. Do is that I've good not the quiet, quiet, quiet ish. Do good to me. Do good to me. Because the scepter of the wicked appears to have been chilling on me for way too long. 
I know something happened with my YouTube channels and the only reason why I keep on pushing is because I trust you're going to restore them or you're going to rapture the church. None such thing has happened so far and I cannot wait another year. I can't wait another two years because I am at the point where I'm so frozen. I'm living in such Antarctic conditions that if I don't get broken through out of this very quickly, one way or another, I will be turned. Because look at what happened to my heart the other day when I happened upon a young lady on YouTube that I subscribed to whose life journey I got to watch in just a matter of days where it is that I saw her one day Ali a particular thing and the next day she was like a whole married woman having children well about to have children and I am not able to do anything of that nature I'm, I'm just frozen everybody sees me this year and next year they see me in the same state the year they're off the same state and it's making me feel obsolete it like I, I, I have started like I feel like I'm not beautiful or worthy like nothing of me is worth taking up like everybody is getting married and i look at all of these women and i'm like but what is so different about you from me uh, when you start to look at things that way you're in trouble when you start to look at a woman and you're like but why why not why you and not me when you start to look at other women like why you and not me that is a breeding ground for bitterness that is going to make out of you the bane of young women's existence and i am not even a young woman i'm 39 years old and while the law says we must wait patiently for we will reap in due season the peaceful food of righteous righteousness if we don't give up my thing is god i'm you know what it's not even about struggling to wait it's about the fact that i am lonely i am alone i'm going nowhere on top of that i'm abused i'm mistreated in my environment over and above it i have nobody caring for me my channel is frozen i do all this work every single day i do all these edits i try very hard to keep myself in a bunch and nothing goes nowhere this level of frozenness this level of isolation ostracization marginalization this level of like I, in like just how unsuccessful i am at everything i try is literally getting to me like have mercy on me for your own namesake have mercy on me. How can I be this unsuccessful like you said in your word? That we are like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and, all, and our leaf does not wither and all we do, we prosper. I am 100% certain that there, this is not witchcraft left unfettered. I am not a breeding ground for satanic idiots. I am not a breeding ground for muppets for the devil. I am not a humid environment that is dark and damp for the very purpose of the growth of mold to do its thing. I know that I'm not that thing. I am thoroughly aware that this is your work, God. You are sovereign. You have left me in this position because you are God. You are too holy and too sovereign and too omnipotent. You are too powerful to be overwhelmed by these charlatans in the occult. There is no way because literally no Christian would have a YouTube channel above one subscriber. If at all. Jesus was not Lord. Is that basic? None of us would get anywhere. None of us would have more than five subscribers and five followers on Facebook. We might be getting shadow banned and censored. We might be getting our videos taken down and stricken. But like, there's enough of us for all of us to feel as if though at least we can still speak. And every so often, they still gain subscribers. I am frozen in a freaky spooky way. And while I every so often feel like I must have an important job in the kingdom of heaven. That's why you are allowing this. Bottom line is, at the end of the day, I'm human. I'm human and there is only so much I can take. There is only so much quietness and loneliness and solitude and isolation and ostracization marginalization complete disregard of my person separated from other human beings unable to touch and be touched by them there's only so much of that i can take in my stride so how are you gonna let that freak go out there and have these babies go go out there and deceive his unfortunate wife into thinking he's in love with her how are you gonna let him get what it is that I, my life is how are you gonna let that man age me 40 45 47 50 with no children and no husband how are you going to let your glory just get taken from the earth just like that? I feel obsolete. I feel obsolete. How are you going to let that bugger make me obsolete? He found the baddest chick in the game a good 12 years ago. Messed up with her. He messed up with her. In 2006, when we met, he messed up. He had five years to do what was right. And then prosper to literally take me, take 10 years, a whole decade out of my life. How are you going to give him that? I need to marry somebody. I need to go and have some children. Or I need to get raptured. Or I need to just die from a heart attack. But please, do not let me die at the hands of these monsters by suicide. Don't let me go out like that. You are God. Show that you are God. Because right now, I feel obsolete. That's the thing that I've been saying to God. That, that Those are the arguments I've been having with him the past few days. I was like, God, look look at how it is that I ended up feeling about a, a, a chick on YouTube. A young woman growing up in front of us that got married. How in the world am I going to be so bitter over the joy and the prosperity and the glory of growing up? By a young woman. Don't let me be that girl, please. I'm begging you. For the sake 
of your own name. Do not allow me to be one of those bitter bras that can't stand the glory of young women as they're going through their lives. I sought your face. I, I prayed. I groveled and I begged at your feet. Now I'm asking you to please take me out of South Africa. A country that ridiculously accepts this for the status quo. I miss the citizens. I've been trying to get out. Something gotta give. Have mercy on me. I feel obsolete. I then remembered the story of Sarah. I then remembered the story of Sarah with Hagar. And with that, let's talk about that in the next part. Because I can't have my videos be too long. Uh, above one hour.